Some time ago I made a Halloween special about cyborg beetles which explained how scientists had applied their knowledge of how the nervous system and the flight muscles of insects were connected to be able to make them fly using remote controlled electrodes. It was definitely Halloween worthy research and there were some very insightful commenters who wanted to know more about the ethics of performing such an experiment on insects and whether insects were capable of feeling pain. So with these questions in mind, today I'm joined by the wonderful Ali from Neurotransmissions. Hi! And we're going to be exploring all things relating to insect pain and neuroscience. The short answer to this question is that currently scientists do not have to clear any ethics forms in order to experiment with insects and based on current research it is likely that they do not experience pain in response to harmful stimuli. Nonetheless, I'm sure you appreciate that this is a very tricky ethical topic and that there is a lot more to it to arrive at this conclusion. So first of all, what is pain? Well, in basic terms, pain is defined as physical discomfort caused by illness or injury. From a neuroscience perspective, pain is a sensation generated by our brain, usually when it receives stimuli that it interprets to be a sign that something is potentially causing harm or danger. The type of nerve that transmits these signals are known as nociceptors, which comes from the Latin nocere, to harm, meaning that they are indicators of harm. Think back to any time you leant on a radiator that was too hot, got your finger jammed in something, or accidentally brushed a nettle. The painful feeling you felt was originally transmitted by a nociceptor. However, our experience of pain is a bit more complicated than that. Pain, per se, isn't just a signal transmitted from the site of the injury by nociceptors. It's a combination of the injury signal and the brain's reaction to that injury. So when you feel pain, it's both the physical response to the injury and also the emotional response generated by your brain. We don't understand everything about the process of pain in humans precisely because it's an individual and internal response. Some of you might be familiar with trying to explain to a doctor that you experience pain and being disbelieved due to a lack of obvious external symptoms, which doesn't negate the fact that the brain is generating the sensation and so you're feeling it. This makes understanding pain, suffering, and distress in other animals even harder, but it's an important question in bioethics and in the field of animal welfare because we don't want to cause other animals distress. Indeed, and it's currently impossible for us to know exactly what another animal's experience is in response to a stimuli, and whether the way they process the world is in any way similar to ours or not. However, the best we can do to tell if an animal is in pain is to look out for external signs that could indicate distress and pain in the animal. For instance, from the examples an ace listed earlier, you might shout out loud when you burn yourself, or nurse a nettle rash and avoid using the affected hand to prevent further pain. These are signs that we can recognize as pain in humans, and we can observe similar reactions in most vertebrates. The most common sign of pain in animals is lameness, which is generally an abnormal gait that minimizes contact and pressure between certain body parts and the ground. Other signs could be licking, scratching, or rubbing an injured site, or vocalizing when approached or when the painful area is touched, as well as other changes in normal behavior. While we observe these behaviors in response to painful stimuli in vertebrates, most invertebrates don't show the same behavior. When an ant loses a leg, or when a beetle is turned into a cyborg, they don't display characteristic signs of lameness, nor do they alter their behavior after the injury or experiment. It's worth clarifying that not displaying certain external behaviors doesn't necessarily mean that an organism isn't experiencing pain. Some animals might learn to hide their pain well to avoid being seen as vulnerable and getting targeted by predators, and I'm sure we've all successfully hidden a headache from our peers. But even bearing that in mind, it's unlikely that insects perceive harmful stimuli in the same painful way we do, due to their external behaviors and their substantially smaller nervous system. It's difficult to say how aware insects are of themselves and the world around them. One could argue that their nervous system just isn't complex enough to both signal an injury and generate an emotional response to it. Nonetheless, research into pain and nociceptors is ongoing. Whilst most invertebrates don't require ethical clearance to be used in laboratory experiments, cephalopods do, as they are known to be intelligent animals and they do experience pain. There have also been plenty of studies suggesting that basic nociceptor responses may exist in some insects. 
For instance, Drosophila larvae thrash violently in response to being poked with a hot and piercing stimuli of a needle. However, this may simply be an innate response against a potential sting from parasitoid wasps that are attempting to lay their eggs inside them, and exhibiting such an avoidant behaviour will increase the larva's survival by reducing their risk of being parasitized. Therefore, one could expect such a behaviour to evolve and become fixed. However, this does not necessarily mean that the larva is distressed or experiencing pain in the same manner as we may do, but is rather performing a reflex. Likewise, there's been inconclusive research indicating that lobsters and other crustaceans, which are phylogenetically close to insects, may experience pain. They have opioid peptides, which mediate pain responses in vertebrates, and display certain aversive responses, such as flicking their talcin when being boiled alive. The truth is, we don't know conclusively whether they do experience pain or not, but in Switzerland, they elected to legislate for lobsters to be stunned or knocked out prior to boiling them. And regardless of whether an organism experiences pain in the same manner as we do or not, I will always advocate for treating living organisms around us with respect. We believe that torturing or mutilating animals for entertainment or because we expect them to be suffering is still sadistic behaviour due to the intentionality behind our actions, regardless of whether the organism affected is experiencing pain or not. In any case, I do hope we've been able to provide further insight to the complexity behind this question. Insects probably don't experience pain, but due to the very nature of pain itself, we might never know for sure. I'm also curious to know, what do you think on this topic? Also. Given you made it this far, I take it you're interested in this type of question, which means that you should go check out the video we made over on Neurotransmissions channel, which is all about whether insects have brains or not. I mean, what even is and isn't a brain? So for more cerebral content, go head over there and please let us know what your brain thinks about it. And as always, thank you so much for watching us, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!